this career sim of the Toronto Blue Jays. I'm Jay Blue at Jays From Away, and you can read my work at www.bluejaysfromaway.com. And uh, thanks for joining us on the General Manager Games channel here. So here we are. We are in the end of June. We're coming up to the international um, international uh, player signing date, which is July 2nd. Um, we've got some interesting people on the waiver wire. We've got Andrew Miller. Um, he's getting $2.68 million. Um, and he has been pretty, well, not great. Uh, a lot of walks from him. He's got a 1.77 whip with Chicago. Um, but not bad. But our bullpen, I think, is pretty solid. Let's look at our bullpen. Um, really, Julian Fernandez is the weakest link. Ryan Barucki is just back. Curtis Taylor has been generally okay, but he, um, I think he's been roughed up a little bit lately. Well, not, yeah, that uh, five-run game, I think that that's what's really contributing to that 4.62 ERA. Ken Giles has been good. Chad Green, Scott Oberg, Cleveland Colton Eastman in his uh, Major League debut has been pretty good. So our relief core hasn't been too bad. So there's no real reason to go and uh, sign Andrew Miller. And if we look at our payroll, um, our total payroll this year is, where is it here? Um, $103 million. So it's really not that high. Um, we're going to come in just under our budget because we do have some significant allocations to staff payroll. Our scouting budget's $10 million. Our, our draft was uh, six and a half. Our development budget is almost 10. So, um, yeah, so in the international free agents, we've got a $5 million budget plus six million of miscellaneous expenses. So um, we're probably going to end up um, about five million dollars under budget so we don't I mean we do have enough money to get uh, Andrew Miller but um, and Sonny Gray is on the waiver wire but that 10 million salary but we, I mean if we picked up Andrew Miller we can afford him quite easily but uh, we just really don't have the room right now um, so let's look at some of our um, goals here um, play close to 500 ball well we're well above 500 ball so we are doing that pretty well improve our teams on base percentage currently third we were 13th before we didn't sign Jonathan Lucroy but Danny Jansen has really come along as a, our everyday catcher our intent our attendance is actually outstanding but they want us to increase it to 48 point two thousand um, by 2025 and in order to reach the playoffs by 2025 uh, 2026. Uh, if we keep going like this, we will make the playoffs, but it's it's still a lot of season left to go. All right, so we are going to continue on. Um, the July 2nd deadline is going to be this week at the end of the week, so we'll check out those international amateurs in this sim. So here we go. We're facing Baltimore. Baltimore is in last place in the American League East, although they're not doing too bad. They're just four games under 500. So here we go. We've got uh, Sean Reed Foley versus Hunter Harvey. And we pull out a win, 5-4. to four. On the mound, Reed Foley threw five and, a, uh, five and a third innings, striking out two, but he did give up two home runs. But only walked, uh, only walked one guy, so that was pretty good. Ryan Barucki back in action. That's his season debut at the Major League level. Um, off to a better start than last year. Last year just pitched five innings and gave up five earned runs um, this year two and two thirds innings one walk two strikeouts Kenny Giles on for the save uh, his 19th one inning pitched one hit two strikeouts Vladdy Jr. was the player of the game two for three with a walk and two home runs four RBI for him Lourdes Gurriel also went deep uh, just seven hits Luis Garcia had two of them and <clears throat> Jensi uh, Yusniel Diaz had one so there's a positive start to the week, and we go on with game number two with Anthony K on the mound, and it's a loss, eight to four. So offensively, not a lot going on. Six hits, including a home run from Luis Garcia, who was one for three with a walk. Bo Bichette, Lourdes Gurriel, Randall Grichuk, uh, Yusniel Diaz, Kevin Biggio, all with hits. Anthony K got a little bit rocked on the mound. Two walks, five strikeouts, and three and two-thirds innings, but five runs on six hits. Baraki, back-to-back games, back-to-back -back shutout outings. Um, excellent work. Julian Fernandez, Colton Eastman, and Tim Meza all gave up runs. 
The fact that we have Baraki back means that if we have the opportunity, we can send down Tim Meza, because now we have a lefty on the roster. All right, one and one so far in this series against Baltimore. Let's try to go out winning. We've got Elvis Luciano and Cody Sedlock. And this is the last game of that series. So here we go. And we lose by a, you know, I, I don't want to use any uh, profane language, but it's, it's a bad amount that we lost by. Uh, six runs in the ninth inning. So 19 to two loss. Luciano gave up six of those runs, but Curtis to everybody was just brutal, except for Baraki. He, you know, swept up some of the mess at the end. Um, Santiago Espinal got into a game on the mound, pitching, giving up five runs in a third of an inning. Better him than some of the other uh, other guys. Um, yeah, everybody was just demolished here. Chad Green, Oberg, they gave up runs. Uh, maybe not as bad as some of the others, but Elvis Luciano, three home runs. Um, offensively, Lourdes Guriel with the only real big strike, hitting a home run, a two-run shot in the fourth inning, but just three hits for the whole club. I think vladdy has gone into a little bit of a funk. So that was ugly. I think I'm going to make a move on our pitching staff. I want to get rid of... I want to bring in a, at least a fresh arm. So who do I want? I think I've mentioned Spencer Turnbull is on the promotion block. Um, Simeon Woods Richardson is still struggling a little bit, so he needs some time to figure that out. Zach Jackson could get the call. Jordan Romano is pitching well. Ty Tice is pitching very well, so I'm going to go with Ty Tice. Ty Tice is my man right now. So I'm actually going to send down Tim Meza. And I'm going to bring up Ty Tice. Ty Tice, of course, was put on the Blue Jays' um, 40-man roster this offseason. So Ty Tice is, uh, is definitely in the Blue Jays' plans. All right, so we have Zach Eflin making the start against Kyle Hendricks. And as you know, I know it's been uh, fairly infrequent that we've been doing our, uh, our updates here. Um, you know, got uh, a lot going on in my life. Hopefully in a couple of weeks, things will settle down a little bit. We'll be able to get more frequent updates to you. Um, so we're going to go here to just check out our um, our injuries, our, our injured list. So as you can see, three of our starting pitchers are on the injured list with Hyunjin Ryu, uh, Nate Pearson, and James Paxton all on the injured list. So they, they, you know we should be back close to full strength in about three weeks. All three of them are coming back within the next couple of weeks. Um, we'll have to get them some, uh, some time down in uh, Buffalo as a rehab, but uh, we do have help coming, but for now we've got Zach Eflin as a starter. So if we, you know, have another unfortunate game like we did in our last game, you know, it's because we're not operating. We're, you know, we're at two fifths of our opening day starting rotation. So anyway, here we go. We have a day off actually, so we'll sim through that, and we're gonna have uh, some updates here, player development updates. We've got Elvis Luciano. He is potential rating drops a whole star, and his overall rating drops a star. Um, Ken Giles, uh, stamina's up. Overall potential ratings drops half a star. Paul Campbell, uh, stamina rating improves. Overall rating drops. I think there might be an overall um, improvement in starting pitching, and that's why some of our starters are losing stars without any other corresponding rating depreciation. Um, Luis Garcia, potential power rating drops, but the current eye improves and overall rating improves. Santiago Espinal, uh, contact rating drops, and he improves overall to 2.5 stars. Paolo Usting, uh, current and potential power ratings improve, and that's interesting at, at his age. Uh, he's 28. Uh, current and potential eye ratings are going up, too. Cameron Eden is dropping. Kyle Bradish is mixed bag. Movement rating goes up, which is actually the 
more important of the two ratings, and the stamina goes down a little bit. Philip Clark, current and potential power improve, overall and potential improve. Chris Rivera, potential movement improves, and overall rating improves. Eric Pardino, current rating, movement rating and control rating both improve. Ben Hernandez, lots of improvement from him, potential stuff, current control, um, current velocity, and overall rating improves from 1 to 1.5 stars. Nick Neal, improvements, uh, contact, and defense. Alexander Ayala, improves stuff, current and potential stuff. Uh, Joe Caliphate, current I rating improves to 60. Potential I rating drops to 65. Overall rating improves to 1 star. Tommy Troy, contact rating improves. Overall rating improves. Alex Sanchez, uh, potential contact, potential power, overall rating improves as well. Trey Harmon, a couple of improvements. He loses some speed, but we get improvements in contact and power currently and overall. Tony Bullard, we get a current contact, current power, current speed rating improving. Overall rating improves, potential rating improves. Estevan Machado, defensive rating improves, and I rating, potential I rating. Alfredo Chacon continues to, um, he improves, but he is uh, not as good, and his potential is not as good as what we might have thought it would be. Drew Dowd, we get some improvement here in current stuff, current control, Max Carlson, overall, and potential ratings improve. Keegan Allen, um, stamina is dropping, but current control from 35 to 40. Gary David, current contact and potential power. Brandon Smith, current power, current eye. Potential eye, and, but potential overall rating drops. Wyatt Langford, lots of improvement here. Current power, current eye, current potential eye, and current speed. Lucas Cook, again, current contact, current power, current and blah, 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 lots of potential. Um, that's actually quite nice to see. Um, Two-star potential for Lucas Cook, and he is not doing great, or he's doing very well repeating uh, repeating Bluefield. Um, Gavin Casas, more improvements here. He's another third baseman. He is repeating the GCL for the third time, so we expect him to do well. Uh, Drake Varnado losing potential while his current speed improves. And Dave Farias in the Dominican Summer League. Contact, potential, power all improve. Uh, contact, potential contact, power, current power, potential I, and current defensive ratings. So that's a lot of Im important stuff there. Okay, and we get a, an evaluation of our goals, 100 prospects. Uh, we might have a couple on this. So top prospects report. Um, I think, yeah, Nick Gonzalez is on here. He is ranked 14th. And Aurelvis Martinez is, mark, is ranked 68th. And I don't think we have any pitchers ranked. I'm just going to give a quick scan. Oh, there, Nate Savino. He was our top pick this year. Um, struggling a little bit. Um, but three walks, 11 strikeouts is pretty good. Um, he's ranked 97th. Oh, and Simeon Woods Richardson is in the top 100 at 91. All right. Any batter of the month, player of the month? No, it doesn't look like. No awards for the Jays for June. Okay, here we are. Kyle Hendricks. So we've, we've made a shuffle. It's not going to be Zach Eflin. It's going to be Paul Campbell. So that's the shuffle. He's facing the Chicago Cubs. The Chicago Cubs are 34 and 47, so we are definitely in a better position than they are. And we're eight games back of the Yankees heading into the series. Um, two games up on the Rays for that la uh, first wild card spot. And we have a personal message. We did win eight to nothing. We have a personal message about the international free agent signing period starting. Uh, let's take a look at the game. So Paul Campbell, excellent in the victory. Eight innings, five strikeouts, one walk, four hits allowed. Player of the game for uh, Campbell. And the offense got a little bit untracked. Randall Grichuk with four hits, including uh, two doubles. 
um, Luis Garcia had a double and a triple. Yusniel Diaz with a home run. Uh, Bo Bichette with his 11th home run of the year, going to one for four with two runs. Uh, Vladdy Guerrero with a home run, 26. That's his 26th of the year. Uh, two for four. Luis Garcia, three hits. Um, Danny Jansen with a couple of hits, including a double. So, yeah, really big game for us. Okay, so let's take a look now. We are checking, checking out our international amateurs. So I always like to sort of try for a little bit of balance in our... Um, in our prospects. And you can see our prospects are very, very heavily weighted um, here for the um, offense. So it's interesting because, you know, our top three are Gonzalez, Aralvis, and uh, Moreno. And then we have Woods Richardson and we have Nate Savino. Um, Savino was our first round pick. And we did go pitcher heavy in this draft. So I'm probably going to look at pitchers. Unfortunately, pitchers in this um, in this year's you know draft are not all that good. <laughs> so Wilson Rosas, only a 45 stuff, and uh, Moises Colon, only you know 40 potential and stuff. Um, you know, Albert Adame. So, you know, I may not go for a pitcher. I would have liked to have gone for a pitcher. So our best overall player, it looks like, is Alex Churuca from Venezuela. 65-55-50. Um, he's also 16, so he's still very young. Not great defense, though. So we have better defense here in a, in a center fielder. He's not a great stealer, but he's got great speed. Um, he's a little bit older, a little bit more raw, but um, 60, 60, 55, that's better. And avoid Ks, I do like to see. He can play infield as well, and his infield ratings are solid. So I like Emil Mendiola. And now he's asking for five million bucks. I'm going to offer him the five million bucks. So he's going to be my number one guy. If he starts to ask for more, we're really, I mean, we probably can go over. But um, yeah, so we, we, we're we going to make him an offer. Alex Chiruka is going to be our second uh our second guy. I really like to see guys with high contact. Ernie Quiros. Um, again, very weak arm is you know problematic, and if we put him in the outfield, it's even worse. All right, let's see what happens. So we now have Zach Eflin on the mound. He's going to go for um, the win, his second win of the season against Braylon Marquez. And it's a loss. We have a personal message. Nate Pearson suffers a setback. It's going to take him another two weeks to return. That is kind of heartbreaking. So we lost 10 to 4. On the mound was Zach Eflin, not a great outing. Ty Tice got hammered in just, you know, one-third of an inning. Curtis Taylor got hit. Colton Eastman, Julian Fernandez, and Ken Giles cleaned things up. Anthony Rizzo kind of went off on the Jays, three for five, with a home run and a double. Um, on our side, home run for Vladdy Guerrero and uh, J.D. Martinez um, who actually makes it into the <laughs> into the box score? Yusniel Diaz, uh, Bo Bichette with a couple hits, and that's about it. We have an important message: oh, All Star voting, very important. Um, and this is our Sunday game. This is our final game of the sim, and we are going to go and have Sean Reed Foley on the mound against Alec Mills.
and it's a win. 11-5, to five, the offense got going. It seems to be that when we win, the offense is usually going. Our pitching hasn't been too bad. Um, J.D. Martinez with a home run. Um, Vladdy Guerrero with another one. I think that's three games in a row. Lourdes Gurriel with another one. He hit makes it to the 20 home run um, plateau. That's his first time in a couple of years. Um, 20 home run plateau. He's hitting at league average offense. His on-base percentage is very low. I mean, you can see with this 30i. Um, also, Luis Garcia with a hit. He had a double um, double machine. That's his 35th double of the season. Yusniel Diaz with a double. J.D. Martinez with a grand slam, I believe. Yes. Um, Diaz a couple hits. Gurriel a couple hits. Bichette with one. Guerrero with three. Guerrero is hitting 333 with 28 home runs. He is a monster. He's got an OPS over 1,000. Kevin Biggio is injured. He's going to be day-to-day for two to three weeks. And we signed Emil Mendiola. We gave him what he wants. And I'm going to put him in the DSL right away. Uh, AL Player of the Week, Luis Robert. And that is it for our... I'm going to let Biggio play. Um, George Springer is on the trading block. Boston, who signed him, and they're paying him only $13.1 million just for this season. That's pretty insane. Um, he's on the trading block. It's fascinating. All right. So that is this week. Let's just take a look at what we have got going. So we have a couple of pitchers who are a little bit away. Um Pearson is now two weeks away. Ryu is about a week. Uh, still got eight days on the injured list. And what happened to... Oh, there is Paxton has another week or so. Uh, one to two weeks injury time left. So uh, two weeks away from hopefully getting at least two of these guys back. Um, we look at our pitchers here. Paul Campbell had a, just coming off a great outing. Zach Eflin, not so much. Anthony Kay, not so much. Elvis Luciano, I think, was not good in his last outing. Um, Sean Reed Foley has been pretty good. Sean Reed Foley, yeah, one and run and six and a third. I actually didn't take a look at our pitchers here. So Sean Reed Foley, six and a third, two hits, three walks. Two home runs, though. Both those hits are uh, were home runs. Two, three runs, one earned. Scott Oberg gave up a couple runs. Ryan Barucki, another scoreless inning for him. Um, Julian Fernandez finished it off. All right. Um, Barucki, since he's come back, he's been outstanding. Colton Eastman has been solid. Walks are a little bit high. Julian Fernandez. Chad Green. Uh, Curtis Taylor has been a little rough. Uh, Ty Tice got hammered in that one appearance, and Ken Giles has been Ken Giles. On the lineup side, Kevin Biggio is a little bit hurt. Uh, I don't really have anybody to replace him, so we're going to keep him there. Alejandro Kirk is not doing a ton, but again, this is his rookie year. Danny Jansen's been quite solid this year. Vladdy Guerrero has been a phenomenal um, Luis Garcia has been very good, and he's heating up, which means, you know, these numbers here, the OBP and the slugging, seeing his walk rate improve and seeing his slugging improve. He, he only has got seven home runs, but 35 doubles and a 377 on on-base percentage is spectacular for Luis Garcia. Um, still has a little bit of home run power to develop, and remember, he's just 22. I think he's younger than Vlad. Yeah, he's younger than Vlad. Um, he's got good speed. He's stolen eight bases for us. Uh, good stealing, excellent base running. Like So all of these all-around uh, things really add value. He's got 3.4 war, which is, to be honest, I mean, a huge increase from his rookie year, which was like right around zero. Um, now, the end of last year, he had a big fade at the end of the year. So hopefully he's going to maintain... Uh, a little bit 
even if he fades a little bit, that's still fine. Um, the 3.4 war, I think, is second on the team. 2.8 here for Beau Bichette, who's doing pretty well. Lourdes Gurriel, Yusniel Diaz, uh, Randall Grichuk has 2.4. So, yeah, our number two war on the team right now is Luis Garcia, who was a Rule 5 pick. So that's, you know, extremely successful for us. Let's go down to the minors. So we've got the Buffalo Bisons. All right. And, you know, the last week for the Bisons, not been the most successful. Winning 4 nothing. who's been that pitcher? That was Spencer Turnbull. Um, <clears throat> and... On the pitching side, again, we've taken a look at this quickly when we're looking for um, players to call up. Patrick Murphy is back in the rotation. He's doing okay. Joey Murray is doing okay. Not fantastic, but the strikeout rate is terrific. Jordan Romano, Kaz Tsutsui, Spencer Turnbull has been doing very, very well. Homer Bailey, Thomas Hatch. So Homer Bailey is doing okay. He's a veteran arm. That's you know what he's been asked to do. Zach Jackson is doing pretty well. Uh, Danny Jimenez, not so great. Johan Lopez has been pretty good. And that six walks to 30 strikeouts rate is really nice. Um, Tim Meza is recently back. Kirby Sneed, not doing great. Trent Thornton, you know, he's okay in relief. And Kyle Keller. Um, I mean, Keller probably should be in the majors, but he was doing so badly. I'm going to look for a way to get him back, though. Gabby Moreno is really struggling. Um, very cold. He's got a 74 OPS plus. Ryan Noda, on the other hand, doing very well. I love how high his on-base percentage is. Michael Toglia is doing okay. And really, that's about it. Brock Lundquist is the only other guy. Um, Chavez Young is, is not doing as well as we'd like. And Philip Clark. Very solid production here in double A. And he's 24, but uh, contact is pretty much maxed out. So um, he may be peaking at this point. Tanner Morris is above 100. Samad Taylor, 126. So he's got that great walk rate. 24 walks in 159 plate appearances. Jordan Groshans is doing okay. He's not doing fantastic. Otto Lopez, not doing very well. Uh, Zach Ashford, doing okay. Will Robertson is actually one of our better hitters, our more productive hitters. Griffin Conine is really falling off here. On the mound, Alec Manoa, 1.89 whip, is pretty ugly. Josh Winkowski is doing pretty well. And still a very low strikeout rate. Sean Weimer is doing okay in relief. Jen C. Diaz. You know, the strikeout rate is fine. And Hansel Rodriguez, really, he should get a promotion soon. Moving down to the Dunedin Blue Jays. Nobody in the rotation is really kicking butt. I mean, uh, Troy Watson's doing okay. Antonio Saldana is, uh, there's some potential here, and he's, again, a younger guy. So most of these guys are like 25, 26, um, except for Pardino, who is 21. Um, still potential, so we're not going to write him off just yet. Felipe Castaneda is not doing bad as a reliever. Reuter Hernandez is walking way too many people. Um, Andrew McInvale, not bad in relief. Grant Townsend is doing okay. Um, and Chris Rivera is our real closer, but he's not, you know, 6.59 ERA. In terms of our lineups, Francisco Ruiz is, you know, he's fallen off a little bit. Um, still putting up good numbers, but not as just eye-popping as they were down in uh, Lansing. P.K. Morris is doing well. And Nick Gonzalez has really started to surge. Gonzalez is not close to the lead team lead in home runs. That's Johnny Aiello. But um, <clears throat> his uh, batting average and on-base percentage are really surging. Johnny Aiello has hit a ton of home runs, but uh, only 117 OPS+. Plus. 
Leonardo Jimenez, 84 OPS plus. And Shoji Kinoshita is the only one really above league average. DJ Neal is really struggling. Justin Ammons is close to league average. We go down to Lansing, and Scotty Bradley is on a streak. He's really playing well lately. Spencer Horwitz also well above average in terms of his league production. Aurelius Martinez is getting up there, but not the numbers we want to see from uh, the 20-year-old. He's still young. He's still 20. But we do want to see more from him. Trevor Schwecki doing okay, and the outfield is really... I mean, DeSan Brown for an 87 is not horrible, but he's got to get his average and on-base percentage up so he can really get those steals. Um, Adam Kloffenstein is doing okay. Doing okay. Ben Hernandez is really doing well since his promotion from... Uh, well, mid-season promotion. Um Brandon Isert is also one of the only other guys doing really well. It's also his third year in Lansing. So Jack Perkins, first year in full season, struggling a little bit. Connor Santala doing very well. We've got a lot of pitchers here. 20 in total. Uh, nobody else has really taken a step above And we go down to Vancouver now. Vancouver, they've played, you know, maybe a dozen games. And if we look at our guys, we've got Jose Ferrer not doing well. Daniel Barich has uh, some production here. No home runs yet. Joe Califat not doing all that well. He is playing quite a lot. Um, Tommy Troy is doing pretty well. You know, early in the season, we're not, uh, he's got some room here to improve. And very good here in the, the speed and the um, the defensive ratings. Tony Bullard is our third baseman. He is doing very well to start the season. Trey Harmon leading the team, three home runs. Where'd he go? There he is. He's also quite hot. Um... 23 years old, so we're going to need to move him up fairly quickly. Estevan Machado is struggling a lot. He's still just 19, so there's lots of room for him to improve. Steven Rivas at 23 is doing okay. Alfredo Chacon is also struggling mightily. He's just 18. And the pitching. Nico Cole is one of our better starters. Nate Savino, our first-round pick, is doing okay. I'm not going to panic. Uh, Zach Maxwell, uh, he was one of our early picks, second-rounder. He's doing, I mean, I've seen better. Alexander Ayala, not doing great. Brian Mejia is doing okay, too. Thomas Little is showing some excellent strikeout stuff with nine strikeouts in just five innings. All right, we'll go down to Bluefield. Take a trip into the Appalachians. And they've just started their season. They've only got a few games under their belts. Mason Montgomery hasn't actually pitched yet. Um, none of our starters have really done well. Keegan Allen with three starts. Now, I will say that the two walks, 16 strikeouts, and 15 innings is quite good, so I'm not worried about him too much. Junior Hinojosa is doing pretty well, and this is also his third year in, in uh, Bluefield. And we have some decent results from Ethan Hayslip. He's walked as many as he's struck out, so that's also a concern. Joshua Kasevich also walked as many as he struck out. Again, very, very early. You know, 10 games, 11 games. So we have had, you know, maybe a dozen games for these uh, these guys. Brandon Fields, off to a monstrous start here. Played in 11 games. It's his second year at the level, and he's really improving. He's hitting 404 in his first 11 games. Um... Carson Wells has a 241 OPS. He is also 
hitting 409, 490, 886, five home runs already in his second season. He's only 20 years old. Wow. Okay, so we're going to have to move him up. Who do we have in the outfield in Vancouver? I think we have a lot of outfielders. Yeah. Robbie, but I mean, not a lot of them are really doing well. We're going to give him... We're going to give Carson Wells. He is just 20. We're going to give him another couple of weeks. We'll see what happens. But... Um, <laughs> in just 11 games, he's already, in, you know, beaten his home run total from last year. Drake Vernado is doing okay, um, even though he's been losing potential. He's doing okay. Uh, Raquel De Castro is not doing well at all. Wyatt Langford. Brandon Smith is doing okay. He's got a much better OBP than uh, batting average. And Wilfran Astudio is our catcher. We have already taken a look at the pitchers, and we're going to go to the GCL. So nobody's really, you know, they've only been playing for a week. Um, so I don't want to look too much into it, but, uh, you know, Yuri Sanchez, Philip Abner, a lot of guys who are walking as many as they strike out. Camden Loverich. Now, he's a little bit older. He's 21. Johan Concepcion and Hagen Smith. Hagen Smith is still 18, so it's good to see. And he does, he has improved his walks in just the small sample size. And in terms of our lineups, Gary David is getting the bulk of the catching. He's 20, and he's been in the JCL for a few years now. Tracy Will Hote. 21-year-old, third time is the charm, I think. Gustavo Gutierrez, Gavin Casas, he's doing pretty well. Again, another third time is a charm. He's 21 years old. Two home runs already, five games. So we're going to give him another week or two and maybe move him up. Nick DeMarco. And Kyle Bork, two home runs already. Yeah, he may be a little advanced for this league at his age. He's 21. Robert Robertis. Jose Villegas, I think he was one of our international signings. So he's still got a lot of potential, but he is struggling at the higher level. Cole Hinkleman. He's doing very, very well in his first try. Again, he's 21 already. All right, folks. Um, that is mostly it. We're going to pick up next Sim, we are six games back of the Yankees, so we're doing well. We're two games up on the Tampa Bay Rays, 50 and 34. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jay Blue at Jays from Away. You can find my work on uh, writing about the Blue Jays, bluejaysfromaway.com. And thanks for joining us here on the General Manager Games Network.